We're going to take a look at section 9.1, which is a periodic interest rate. And our calculus is i per y. So we knew from before that our future value is equal to our present value, 1 plus i to the n. So now what we're doing is we're, we're solving, solving for i. So first thing we do is the future value over the present value is equal to 1 plus i to the n. And in order to get, get rid of that, we take the nth root of the future value over the present value is 1 plus i. So our formula is i is equal to the nth root of the future value over the present value minus 1. But in most cases, we're probably going to use the calculator like we did before and just calculate i per y. So when we get the calculator, we notice that, well, in here, we're, we're, we're using i, and we know that i is equal to j over m. And our problems are, the solution for our problem is probably going to be j. So we know that when we use i per y, we're going to compute i per y, the result that comes out is going to be i, and then we need to convert that value into the nominal value j that we had before. So we'll probably start with a, a problem, and we'll do question 2 on page 334. So page 334, number 2. This problem is fairly simple. It says, what is the annual compounded nominal rate of growth if the future value of $1,000 $1, after 20 years was $4,016.94? So we do the same diagram as we did before. We start off with $1,000 and we end up with $4,016.94. We know that the duration of this is 20 years and we want to find out so find value of i and this is a nominal rate so using the values in our calculator we can just say our present value this is a thousand because that was our, our starting value our future value is the value that we have on the end which is 4016 94 n which was 20 years and we're looking at an annual amount so this is 20 years and we'll just be really explicit compounding one time a year which is 20 years and then the last value is now you want to compute i per y and the value that comes out well let's do it on the calculator we're looking at a, at a value good spot, where $1,000 is our present value, $4,016.94 is our future value, 20 which is our n, we're going to compute a value for i per y, and it says error 5. And the reason why it says error 5 is we're looking for a value that we can get $1,000 now and get $4,000 later. Remember we used to, or we had to use the cash flow notation. So either this needed to be negative or that needed to be a negative. So we'll make this negative 1,000. Do the same cal calculation again. So you got $1,000 negative. That's gonna be our present value. Now we can compute i per y and it says 7.1999999, Just checking the other way, if we said this is $1,000 of present value and 4016.94 negative as a future value and compute i per y, we get exactly the same value. So for right now, it doesn't matter whether this is negative and this is positive. What matters is that they are opposites. So if we have a negative there, we have a positive there. 
Well, if we look at something that isn't a nominal rate, we can take a look at uh, question six. Sorry, we'll take a look at question 12 on page 335. And we look at page 335, number 12, we have a timeline that says the maturity value of a $5,000 four-year compound interest GIC was $6,147.82. What quarterly compounded rate did it earn? So now we have, this, again, the same sort of diagram. We have a present value. Here our present value was $5,000. I'm going to assume that we're the one that invested it. So we have a $5,000 investment. And then we're going to get back a maturity value of $6,147.82. So we're going to take an investment of $5,000, negative $5,000, going to have a positive value of $41,47.82. And this is going to take four years. And again, we're going to find I. Well, the couple adjustments here is when I is compounded quarterly. So we're looking at compounded quarterly. Most of the stuff is the same. We're still going to have a present value, in this case negative 5,000, a future value that is 61,47,82. And now this is going to be number of years, four, times the compounding per year. So quarterly is four times per year. So that's going to be 16 periods. Now when we compute i per y, we get a value that is $5,000 negative present value. 61.47.82 future value, 16 as an n, we're going to impute i per y, and this comes out as 1.30%. And this is 1.30% per quarter. What we're looking for in the question is the nominal annual rate after compounding. So this, the result that we get out of this is I. And what we're looking for is J. And we know we had our formula that said I is equal to J over M. Solving for J, we say J is equal to I M. So J is equal to our 1.3% times our compounding period, or compoundings per year, 4, 5.2%. The important thing to notice here is that when we're calculating the J, again, this value of M4 is the same of that value of M that we used there before. So in review, section 9.1, it's really all about calculating I. I then gets converted into J for a nominal rate, and we do things exactly the same as we did before. The big thing is that one of these values, present value or future value, is negative, and the other one is positive.